welcome to my channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Brie on TV where I am your host who's always going to smoke hookah. You already know the vibes. Brie. I mentioned Vlogmas is a time or a period for people watching my channel who are subscribed or people who just come back every time I upload without subscribing to kind of just like know what's tea, know what's going on and so forth. And I feel like this is very important for me to touch on only because a lot of people that I feel like I gained traffic from because of my YouTube um, reached out to me in regards to today's video. Brie on TV, the travel agent is no longer a licensed travel agent. I feel like I will always be a travel agent because if you reach out to me in regards to travel, I'll be able to tell you the travel restrictions due to COVID. I'll be able to tell you the time zone differentiation, the currency rates. I'll be able to let you know all the hottest spots to go to. Like I can let you know a lot of tea in regards to a country, an island, any destination you're looking to go to just because I still and will always have a passion to travel. But the host agency that I was affiliated with, which is called Travel Planners International, I am no longer affiliated with them and I no longer pay a monthly membership to be a part of their host agency so that way I can be a licensed travel agent per se. So I joined in February and technically Corona hit. <laughs> we knew about Corona in February, but I feel like precautions started taking place in March. So me being a new travel agent, I was kind of confused at that point because technically I didn't really have a mentor going into the travel agency game only because like I travel, like I do this. But I was like, why not make a commission off of a hobby of mine or something that I'm already doing? So that's really the only reason I became a travel agent. So with all of the major changes taking effect in March, I wasn't even a good two months in before I feel like I started to reap the cons of a travel agent being affected during the pandemic. Lord, let me remind you, I'm paying this host agency month after month, after month, after month, after month. Going into 2021, you know, you always reevaluate your life. Sometimes you reevaluate your life every three months. You just do a check-in with yourself like, you know, hey, how we doing? What we need to work on? what we need to, you know, cut out. And so what we needed to cut out going into 2021 was me paying this host agency month after month after month when the host agency ain't even the same, isn't even offering the same perks or benefits and things of that nature as to why I joined. So the reason why I joined the host agency that I joined, let's, you know, dive into that is because they would be offering of weekly life. seminars, a lot of like monthly gatherings, one-on-one -on -one engagement experience that you can do being a part of this host agency. Go to Florida, hop on, let's just say Royal Caribbean or Carnival's Cruise Line and tour the cruise just to get more of an insight of how you know, this industry works when it comes down to me selling travel to people looking to go on cruises. So once you join, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, member from their engagement team that will basically guide you along the process within your first year of becoming a travel agent. Cool. Everybody needs that. I don't care how much I feel like I know about travel. I want any and all help to help me become the best travel agent that I can be. So once the pandemic really took effect, you know, a lot of people were getting laid off. So I understood oh. that whole department of engagement was let go. Along with them taking away like the monthly, the monthly gatherings, which is very understandable due to the pandemic. But I want to talk about myself. I fell off in regards to promoting my travel agency, you know, once you know, countries or governments approved for their islands or their countries to now start accept, accepting um, non-essential travelers. I was on the first flight and you can go check out my Antigua and Barbuda um, content video 
And then the next month, I went to the US Virgin Islands. And then the next month, I went to Aruba. And then after that, I went to Ghana. You know, I lived a really good lifestyle in regards to traveling this year. In order for me to like work, make the money that I need to make to travel, live the lifestyle that I'm trying to live, I was like boom, 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 Working, putting out content for YouTube, still trying to have a social life. I was losing my passion not to travel, not to post content on YouTube about my travel, but I was losing my passion of assisting strangers or even people who I knew of them living their best life and traveling. So now we're gonna touch on travelers traveling, but travelers not really seeking a travel agent to travel. Everybody is traveling to Tulum. I guarantee you that most of the people who travel to Tulum didn't book through a travel agent. And it's not really necessary, but I feel like if you do decide to book through a travel agent, it's for convenience. People have reached out to me due to my YouTube, due to me meeting them, you know, out in the streets, due to them following me on social media, due to somebody telling them about me being a travel agent. I can't get mad at you reaching out to me to inquire about travel and not wanting to book through me, if that makes sense. Some travel agents, they just get really, really pissed. And it's like, I understand why you get really, really pissed that people are asking you an abundance of questions, but they're not looking to book through you. Let's just throw out an accurate example, Ghana. A lot of people who watch my video in regards to my experience in Ghana, when I went, everything that I had to do to prepare for that trip and so forth. But everybody who's reached out to me, except for one person who will get to, was not looking to book through me. And I can't be mad at them. Half of the people who reached out to me were Ghanaian to begin with. You're reaching out to me because of my experience, because I already went there, because I'm knowledgeable on this information. Being a travel agent, you will have people who will take up an abundance of your time questioning you down with information. After I posted the video of my experience in Ghana and the travel requirements to go to Ghana, I had one person reach out to me. We'll just call her $400. So basically she reached out to me asking me if I can look up travel and hotel accommodation for her to go to Ghana. She gave me the date, she was ecstatic. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I had a good time going to Ghana and I'm gonna make sure that you try to have your best time going to Ghana too. I sent her a quote of the information involved to go to Ghana. But also in the video, I explained it. It's a process that, you know, you have to go through to go to Ghana. So there's other type of fees that come with that. You know, you're gonna have to pay for a visa. You're gonna have to pay for your COVID test. Cause it's two of them. Sis hits me back with, oh, that is really out of my price range. Can you look at changing the date? Let's sit down and talk about how much you really can afford in regards to go to Ghana. She then hits me back like, it's still too pricey. I was thinking you was gonna hit me with a $400 flight or something that really made a little bit more sense. I'm not even finna play with you. I'm not even finna waste your time because obviously you're wasting my time. You really thought that you or I could find you a $400 flight round trip to go to Africa. Let's knock out the country Ghana, but let's just talk about the destination or the continent Africa. Yeah, I, I'm thankful that you reached out to me because I'm thankful that I'm able to educate you and let you know that you will never, ever find a flight even close to $400 to go round trip to Africa. A lot of Caribbean islands, Mexico and so forth. So I just gave her that spiel and told her that those are the type of places that she could go to in regards to the type of fun that she was trying to have. But Africa just ain't it, baby. Anybody watching this video that is looking to become a travel agent, that has thought about becoming a travel agent, a lot of the things that I'm gonna mention is, in gonna be, is going to be in correlation to us being in a pandemic. If you're not being contacted in regards to travel already, I just personally feel like you should wait. That's just my opinion. 
I think you should wait until, you know, the travel industry kind of gets back into the gist of how it even used to be. Because even right now, it's nowhere close to what it used to be pre-COVID. Today, you want to reap your benefits of paying the money or the dues, fees that you pay to become a travel agent. If you are being contacted in regards to travel related, you know, information, then it would make sense for you to be a travel agent right now. I'm not gonna knock it to you. And it's gonna be up to you, depending on what host agency you join, depending on the type of demographic, audience, the type of traffic that you get, you know, inquiring about travel, that's ultimately gonna decide the type of side money that you're gonna make or the type of benefits that you're gonna reap you know, um, commission-wise in regards to travel. The vision that I had becoming a travel agent before COVID, because I joined before COVID, was I wanted to be the successful millennial travel agent. Give millennials the opportunity to travel. But I also still wanted to go out of my comfort zone and reach that type of audience, like white families, who basically, you know, go on cruises year round, tackle all of like the group trips of millennials going on cabin trips, anything group wise, that's really what I was trying to target. But we're in a pandemic. People are not traveling like that. With me making an income with YouTube, I just personally feel like that kind of replaced the type of side money that I would have been making with me being a travel agent. So I'm not really taking an L by not being a licensed travel agent anymore. It's not, it's not necessary for me to be a travel agent at this moment. So that's just basically a quick update of me just wanting to let y'all know what's tea in regards to Brie on TV's lifestyle. Along with explaining to y'all the different aspects that went into the decision that I decided to make. On top of informing y'all of if you're thinking about becoming a travel agent, this is what you need to be aware of. In regards to my travel agency page, Lexus Travels, I will still and will always keep that name. So I'm not letting go of my Instagram page, so I just wanna throw that out there as well. But what I have planned for the Instagram page is more so along the lines of information. you know just in this video without informing y'all of people who I would highly recommend that you use in regards to all of your travel needs.